now let's go to the 2014 Nationals where you performed an amazingly crowd-engaging James Brown program here in Boston. I was there in the audience and placed third. There were three spots on the Olympic team, but you got passed on, and you were not selected on the Sochi Olympic team. What do you remember about this time? You know, I, I went home to my parents, and I, um, I just, like, kind of was started to get to a point where I mean, skating had been there for me and I skated every day. And I, then I, I came back from the U.S. championships and I hated going into the brink because I always felt like everyone was pitying me. And I, I was also feeling really sorry for myself. And I didn't really see why I was skating. I mean, when you start skating at such a young age and then you start to prove yourself and you start to get those results and you're delivering. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh no, you're not, you're not good enough. After already going to an Olympic games, I guess I started to have a really hard time getting out of bed because my daily routine included going to skating every day and I had sacrificed everything for skating. I wasn't going to school. I was literally just skating. And so it was kind of like, why, why am I bothering? But also like, I didn't have anything else going for me. Mm -hmm. And so I started to just kind of like not do a lot with my day to the point where and I, I think it was really hard for my parents because they understood that I needed time to mope around and um, you know not do anything but also I don't think they really knew how to help me because they kind of took a hands-off approach and so it felt like I, I mean I, I was very independent even from a young age but at the same time, I really didn't have a lot of direction and guidance and didn't know what to do for a long time. Oh, my goodness. I, and, you know, you were only 20 as well. It's so young and experiencing all of that. Well, how, how long did that period last that you were, you know, having a hard time getting up and not feeling, you know, not feeling great? Uh, I think I would say like for a solid like month, mm -hmm. I was just like not doing anything. And so I just really didn't know what to do. And so I think through talking to my friends and kind of relating to what uh, my friends were going through, I kind of decided almost instead of going the right route and looking for doctors, I just like didn't understand how the medical system works and that I could ask for help. And so I kind of asked from my own peers and friends and, mm -hmm. and found out about antidepressants mm -hmm. and um, the way that our resources are provided to us. We, um, we were, well, I was seeing a general doctor for yeah. my physical at, at our skating camp every year. And so I, I called her up and I said, you know, like, I think I might be depressed I didn't really go through the test to diagnose, yeah. get diagnosed, but I said, I think I'm depressed because I can't get out of bed and I really need some help. And I've heard about antidepressants. Can I take them? And I think that, you know, I mean, everybody saw my disappointment when I didn't make it to the team. And I didn't know what to do. And, and so I think she understood that and um, prescribed me the antidepressants. I don't know if it was just the effect of taking them, yeah. but they definitely started to get me out of bed and started, mm -hmm. you know, I started going back to the rink to exercise because exercise releases um, serotonin, which is, mm -hmm. it is your happiness gauge. And so I think the that was my reason for going back to the rink. And slowly over time, I really thought about what my parents had told me. And I thought, like, I don't want my career to end on this note. And I knew that I loved skating so much. And so I guess I wanted to find that feeling again. And mm -hmm. I moved to Colorado Springs. 
I ended up adopting a dog. And I think that with my antidepressants and uh, having Lincoln, who is my responsibility, uh, I started to, you know, see the reason and the strength to get back into my training. Oh, you know, I'm so glad that you did call a doctor, um, whatever channel you took. It was, I'm glad that you asked for help in in whatever form it was. Did you have any fear about antidepressants or, you know, how did you feel taking them? I mean, to this day, it's not something that I've really talked about with my parents. Mm -hmm. Um, I think mental health in general is not something that my parents have a lot of knowledge in. And so Mm -hmm. anytime we go through some hardship, we acknowledge it, but at the same time, we kind of sweep it under the rug. It, It was definitely hard for me to talk about initially about taking these antidepressants because I was always expected to be strong and to stay strong. And, and so I think that feeling like relying on a medication was a weakness was how I initially felt. But then I think with the power of social media and through talking with my friends, I've learned that I'm not the only one who has kind of fallen under, you know, societal pressures. And so I think, especially in a cultural sense, it's important to know that, you know, Asian Americans also fall prey to depression and, and that it's okay to ask for help and to um, get medical help. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you're mentioning this. And thank you for sharing um, your experience of, of such a hard time. You know, the stigma for seeking mental health care is, is real. It really is real. And I hope that more people could be um, encouraged to access treatment when they're starting to feel the symptoms of emotional distress rather than, than when they're actually in a crisis. Um, and you mentioned about kind of the cultural um, impact of, of that sort of Eastern Asian culture. Um, you know, I, you know I, I share the heritage with you of um, coming from, from a Japanese family and Japanese culture. I think that the Japanese culture, while having like so much strength and depth and beauty, it also is a culture that forces maybe blame on yourself, um, and um, and they value kind of tolerating pain rather than than taking action to change the situation or change um, change yourself, change other people. And there, you know, the culture itself carries a lot of weight of shame as well. Um, I want to point out that uh, Asian girls and women between ages 15 and 20. Uh, have the second highest suicide rate among all races, and um, and similar to other Asian uh, or Eastern Asian countries, uh, suicide continues to be a major problem in Japan. So you know, thank you again for mentioning about your experience of going through um, such a dark time, and and um, and I, I I'm sure that many people are encouraged to hear you. Um, getting out of it. And I wanted to touch on the antidepressants as well. Um, It's really great to hear that you took some antidepressants and it seems like the effects were subtle, but it did get you out of that rut that you were in. Um, Antidepressants could sometimes work immediately wonderfully and, you know, good for for them for experiencing that. For some other people, you know, the the effects could be subtle like you had experienced or it could also take a while to come on. uh, and um, and some people experience side effects such as headaches and agitation. And it could be a process to find the right medication that's the right fit for you. And it really could you know, be different from one person to another. Again, I'm happy that you tried it. And I'm really happy that you got the treatment that could get out of that terrible emotional state to the point that you could start kind of moving forward and, and, um, and find other ways of, of making yourself happy, like training and, um, and like, like your dog. And I think that like one step of getting you out of that rut, if medications could do that, I think, you know, more power to it in that moment. Um, and I'm glad that you acknowledged that that wasn't the only thing. It wasn't like you took you took a pill and then next day it was like a brighter day. It was a process. And it was not only that, there were many things that went into it, including your own effort and, and a kind of acknowledgement and insight and judgment that you used in that moment. So again, I'm so glad that um, that, that worked out.